Thank you, gentlemen. Man, we got some amazing, amazing people in the house. Who's excited for conference? Yeah. Come on, if you're excited, I want to invite you to stand to your feet if you're able and find a space to worship. We're going to give, we're going to give God all the glory tonight. We're going to make a joyful noise. Anybody ready to make some noise? Make a joyful noise. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Well, hey, as you guys find a place to worship, it doesn't have to be up front. It doesn't have to be uh, at your seat. You can find some space to worship. But here as we transition, I want to read a passage of scripture for everybody tonight. And it really just bring our focus to where it really needs to be. And that's looking to Jesus. Because he alone, he alone is able to work a miracle in our lives. And I don't know about you, but I want God to work miracles in my life. I want to see God work miracles in my family. I want to see God work miracles in this city. Come on. We need Jesus. We can't do it without him. Come on. Psalms 34 verse 1 uh, says this, I will praise the Lord at all times. Say all times. all times. I will constantly speak of his praise. I will boast only in the Lord. Let all who are helpless take heart. Come, let us tell of the Lord's greatness. Let us exalt his name together. I prayed to the Lord and he answered me. He freed me from all of my fears. Come on, somebody need freedom? Yeah, come on. This is so good. Those who look to him for help will be radiant with joy. Come on, we need a generation that's marked by joy. Not, come on, not, not joy in our circumstances because those change. We need joy in the Lord. The joy of the Lord is our strength. No shadow of shame will darken their faces. In my desperation, I prayed and the Lord listened. He saved me from all of my troubles. That's our God tonight. Come on. That's our God tonight. And he's worthy of our praise. He's worthy of all of our praise. And so tonight, we're going to make a joyful noise. We're going we're gonna to dance. We're going to sing. We're going to clap. We're going to party because he's worthy. So if you're ready tonight, come on. Let's pray and invite him here tonight. Jesus, we thank you that you are here tonight. That's a promise in your word. Well, Lord, we stand on that promise, and we ask you to help us to be present here tonight with you. Jesus, we need you. We need your, your anointing in our life. We need your miraculous touch in our lives. Lord, we're, we're, we're here tonight standing on behalf of our families, standing on behalf of our friends, standing on behalf of our schools, and, and standing on behalf of your purpose for these cities. Jesus, we're believing for a revival in and through this, this, this area, Lord. We thank you so much. In Jesus' name, come on, let's lift up our voices. Yeah, let's worship. Come on. Like it's the air I'm breathing I was your 
Lord. Here we go. The joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I'll never stop. No, I'll never stop. No, I'll never stop. No, nothing can stop my praise. The joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. No, I'll never stop. No, I'll never stop. No, nothing can stop my praise. Here we go. I will be. Rejoice. I will rejoice. I will dance in your kindness and claim every essence. Here we go, scream it out, scream it inside. I will wake up. I will rejoice. I will rejoice. I will shout of your goodness forever again and again. I will shout of your goodness forever again and again. Oh, I will shout of your goodness forever again and again. All right, let's give it up tonight. Let's give it up for the Lord. It's getting a little loud in here, I think. It's getting a little loud. You guys ready to get loud? Yeah. 
Jesus is so good. He's just getting started. But hey, in order to keep this party start rolling, I need you guys to safely, slowly find six people on the way to your seat and give them a giant high five. Come on, come on, come on. Woo! Hey, I got some good news for you guys. We got the air conditioning cranking. So if you're warm like I am, it's okay. The air conditioning is kicking on. It'll be, it'll be okay. So, um, man, night one is off to a, a great start. You guys, man, you guys came ready to worship. We are so excited for conference, and I speak, I know I speak on behalf of all of the youth pastors that your churches represent. We are so, we are so expectant of everything that God is going to do in the next three nights in our lives, what he's going to speak to us. And tonight, we are so privileged to, to be ready to receive God's word. And so I just want to encourage you, if you have a Bible, if you have a notepad or notes app on your phone, be ready to get that out and write down what God is speaking to you tonight. Uh, I just want to get you ready, prime the pump, because sometimes what happens in atmospheres like this, we're like, man, I'm never going to forget that. But what happens? We forget. <laughs> we leak. And so God is going to pour some new things into us, into, into some, some new wine, into some new wineskins. Come on. Yeah, we're, we're believing for that. But we need to be ready to receive and remember and reshare what God has deposited in us. So get your notes app out, get your Bible. And if you don't have a Bible, talk to a leader. We will hook you up. I, I know that. But before I introduce tonight's speaker, I just want to give honor where honor is due. And tonight we are at one church. Tomorrow night we're going to be at Victory Faith Church. Yep. And night three we're going to be at Heart of the City Church. Come on. And I want you guys to know, this kind of thing doesn't happen just happenstance. It happens because of an investment, of vision, of leadership. And I'm so honored that tonight our lead pastors at one church are here tonight. Pastor Will and Teresa, would you guys stand so we can honor you? Come on, make some noise. Thank you. Thank you for believing in this generation, for saying yes to, to make this space available. To, to hang out and to worship Jesus, to grow together. Pastor Scott and Holly from the North Campus, thank you. Come on, stand up to your feet. Come on, make some noise. We are so blessed to have Pastor Will and Teresa, Pastor Scott and Holly. You guys, thank you so much for your investment into the next generation. And uh, without further ado, I, I have to invite my friend, uh, a, a fellow pastor, somebody I really admire, somebody I look up to, Pastor Aaron Richner. He's our night one speaker tonight. Come on, come on up here, Pastor Aaron. He brought his lovely wife, Rochelle, with him tonight. She's right here. Uh, make some noise for pa Pastor Rochelle. Come on. You know, I started losing my hair, and it's been a, it's been a tough loss. Uh, you know, I, I kind of grieve daily about it, but then there's hope because I look at Pastor Aaron and I'm like, man, this man is the coolest man I know, and he can rock the bald with the beard, so I'm going to give it a shot. So you might be looking at me like, hey, what the heck are you doing? I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to follow in your example. But all jokes aside, man, Pastor Aaron, you are anointed with a voice for this generation, for, for all generations right now, God has is, God is, um, given you just such a special anointing. I've received over and over and over again um, encouragement. Um, correction. Sometimes the Lord like convicts us of things, and and every time I, I listen to Pastor Aaron, he just he just has a way of presenting God's word with authority, with clarity, and then with conviction. And I know that tonight God has a word for you, for us. And I'm just so honored that you would say yes to be here tonight to deposit into this this group of people. So thank you so much. Come on, can we make some noise for Pastor Aaron? Love you. Love you. Oh, I got you. Come on. What's up, 2022 nights? How are y'all doing? All right. I, I love that. I've, I've never, I've been part of a lot of conferences, but 
this is a moving conference. You're moving not only from church to church, but how many know this is a moving conference because God is on the move? That's right. Come on. Somebody say amen. And uh, we're believing for nothing less than an encounter with the living God for you and that God would both do something in you and then would continue to do something through you. I'm so thankful that you're here. And as was mentioned, brought my lovely wife with me and some of my family. And of course, I come to you from the Cause Church. Come on, Cause. Where are you at? We love you. And I'm thankful for every single church that's represented here. And it's an absolute honor to uh, have your ear for just a few minutes. And it's been my prayer that you wouldn't hear from me, but that you would hear, maybe through me, but you would hear from God. And I do believe that God has something specific just for you, that if you would lean in and maybe you would tune your ear and you would listen what the, what the Spirit of God has to say, this one could change your whole life. Not because of anything I have, but because of what God has. I found out, I've been in this for a little while now, and I found out that you can come in one way and you can leave a different way when you've met with God. Anybody believe that tonight? Amen. Amen. Hey, can we pray? Let's pray together. And uh, God, we love you in this place. And we take a moment and recognize your presence, your Holy Spirit poured out, your power. You continue to honor your promise that, God, when we lift up your name, when we worship, God, you go to work. You inhabit the praise of your people. So, God, in this moment, I pray that this would be like holy ground, that heaven would meet with earth, that healing would meet with sickness, that, God, uh, that, that you, your touch would meet with brokenness, God, that your clarity would meet to everybody's confusion in this place, and, God, that there would be freedom in your house. For after all, it says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Jesus, we thank you for it. We thank you for proclaim. And not only do we proclaim your praise in this place, but God, we hear your voice proclaiming your love, your grace, your mercy over us, your children. And we say in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. All right, if you have your Bible, go to Mark uh, chapter 2. I'm going to actually read two uh, short portions of scripture and uh, that I'm going to preach. And I am kind of one of those preachers that, uh, I, as we just sang, I might get a little loud. And uh, I don't mind if you say amen or kind of go on with it or something like that. I mean, don't get weird about it. You know, don't, don't be, get crazy and, you know, you don't have to do it. But, like, you, you can say amen. And sometimes there's just something about that. You're just saying, hey, I want that for me. I believe that's God's voice for me. I believe, I believe God has that for me. So somebody say Amen. All right, now we're ready to have church. Come on. All right, Mark chapter 2 and verse 16 uh, says this. When the teachers of the law, who were Pharisees, saw Jesus eating with sinners and tax collectors, they asked his disciples, why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said to them, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. All right, one more, flip a few chapters ahead, and now go to Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5 and verse 24. If you're still flipping there, I'm just going to go ahead, or if you have a phone, you're already there, because all you had to type just five, and just, you're there. It says this, a large crowd followed and pressed in around him, around Jesus, and a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She was sick. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Watch this, yet instead of getting any better... She grew worse. Now, when she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Not I might be healed, not maybe I'll be healed, but I will be healed. And it says immediately. It didn't take long. It was immediately. So you can get a touch from God and immediately everything in all your life can change. Immediately, her bleeding stopped, and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. And once Jesus realized that power had gone out from him, he turned to the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? You see, the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, it looks like 20, 22 nights around here. Everybody's just slammed in, and yet you ask, who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then finally, the woman, she kind of had to be like, uh, yeah, that, that was me. Trembling with fear, it says, she told him the whole truth. He said to her daughter, called her daughter. Now, earlier, the Bible said she was the woman with the issue of blood. That's what she was called. But now Jesus, in this moment, turns and calls her daughter and says, your faith has healed you. 
Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. I want to preach to you for the next few minutes, and I'm going to try and be quick because I want to get you all back up here, and I believe that the Holy Spirit is going to touch your life and going to be changed forever. We're going to pray for you tonight, but I want to preach to you for the next few minutes from the subject side effects. If you're taking notes, tapping them into your phone, uh, put it down as side effects, side effects. I wonder what kind of person you are when you get sick, you know, when you are under the weather, you have a cough or a cold or something like that. Uh, there's a few different types of people. There are people, and they're probably, you know, the wiser amongst us that when they get sick, they know, okay, they need to rest. They need to post up. They need to, well, what am I talking about? You're probably all like that right now because you're all in junior high and high school. And so anytime you get a little, just a sniffle, you're like, mom, I need to watch Netflix for the next eight hours. Or I don't think I'm going to be all right. I got to but, but there are a few types of people. Some people know they need to rest. And then there are other people, and I'm going to put myself in this category of people, that when I get sick, when, when I'm under the weather, I just keep working. You could call me a workaholic, whatever, but I just kind of keep going, sometimes to my own detriment, and then it finally catches up with me. Like one time, a few years back, we were getting ready for Easter Sunday. And if you're part of church, you know that Easter Sunday is a big deal. We're expecting the house to be full, for God to move with power, for people to be saved, and so I'm ready, I'm prayed up, I'm studied up, I'm, I'm ready to preach it up. And then I get so sick, and maybe it's TMI, but I was so sick. I mean, I was throwing up everywhere. I was like fever, chills. I couldn't decide if, if I was cold or hot. And my wife was kind of encouraging me, hey, you probably need, because this was like Thursday or Friday at this point, you probably need to text somebody from the team. I don't know if you're going to be able to preach. We had a Saturday night experience at that time. She said, I don't know if you're going to be able to preach for Saturday Easter Saturday, I said, well, I'm going to be able to preach. I don't talk to my wife like I'm just kidding. We're coming up on 16 years. Come on. But I said, no, 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 I'm fine. Don't, you know, don't text anybody. I'm good. I got this. And so it went all the way up until it was Saturday afternoon. So we had the worship experience was coming Saturday night. I needed to preach. And I finally said, I got to get up and shower and get ready and go to church. And I promise you, when I got up out of bed, have you ever been so sick that you tried to take a few steps and then you just fell over? I have been. And, and hey, the Lord was looking out for me. It was like angels caught me and I just, I happened to fall in the direction of my bed and I landed in some fluffy pillows. It was all good. It wasn't a problem. But as I was laying there and the room was spinning, I said, love, that's what I called my wife. I said, love. Go ahead and text somebody from the team. I decided I can't preach. This is a problem. And so somebody on my poor team got a text that went something like this. Uh, get ready. You're preaching Easter service in a couple hours. You need to prep a message. If you're a preacher, you know that's stressful. That's how we do it. Another time, just a few years ago, anybody in the room, have you had, um, let, let me see anybody that you no longer have your appendix. Come on, raise your hand. All right. Come on, you are my people. I'm with you. No appendix? Let's go. So I had a stomach ache that, that lasted for, you know, a few days. And then it, instead of getting better, it got worse. And, and all of a sudden, we were, my wife and I were looking at each other like, this could be append, appendicitis, I think that's what it's called. So I went into the hospital. And long story short, they were like, you need to get your appendix out right now, right away. And so I told them, I said, hey, look, I'm going to leave for a few hours. I got to film a message because I'm... I'm <laughs> Because Sunday's coming, and the people are coming, and God's going to move with power. And I mean, hey, what can I say? I love to preach about God's promises because I always see God move with power. And they said, no, shut up and sit down. If we don't take out your appendix, you're going to die. So I shut up and I sat down. I wonder what kind of person you are when you get sick. The fact of the matter is this. That when Jesus turned to the Pharisees, those people who were experts in the law that claimed to know everything there was to know about God, and talked to them and, and talked about them and said, it's, it's, not, it's not the well, it's not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick, and I've come to call the, not the righteous, but sinners. Jesus was not saying that some people are sick and some people are not sick. What Jesus was saying was, I came to work for those that are simply willing to recognize, hey, 
I'm not well. Let me say it like this. God's power goes to work in the lives of people who have stopped pretending. In fact, there's really only one qualifying characteristic when it comes to receiving the touch of Christ on your life. You just have to know you need it and be willing to ask for it. God, will you do a work in my life? Religion says you're good as long as you can keep pretending. As long as you can keep showing up at youth every week, come on, spray down with some Axe spray or whatever you're doing to keep it fresh. As long as you can keep pretending like you don't have any problems, you're right. But Jesus comes along and says, if you stop hiding it, that's when I can heal it. I didn't come for people that are perfect. I came for people that are still in process. I came for people that have a few problems. I came to be the healer of those that know, hey, I've got a few issues, but God, I believe that you're more than enough to fix what I can't fix. The irony at times is that we've wanted to be well enough, maybe you know, spiritually or emotionally, I'm talking about maybe mentally or whatever, we've wanted to be all well and put together and perfect so that we can come into God's presence. But Jesus is the great physician. You know when I don't go to the doctor? When I've got it all together and I'm well. Why would you stay away from the doctor because you're sick? That's the reason that you go to the doctor, because you're sick. Come on, somebody, and say amen. Jesus said, I'm the great physician. And maybe you are like me and you've got a few issues. And maybe you've got some past and Maybe you've made a few mistakes, and maybe sometimes you struggle with sin. Those are not reasons to stay out of God's presence. Those are reasons to run into God's presence. We've got a great physician. I feel like, you know, when you're at the doctor and the and the you know the nurse or whoever comes out to the waiting room and opens up the door and looks at you and says, The doctor will see you now. That was the message I felt like God put in my spirit for somebody. You felt like you're too jacked up and you're too this, and you're too that, and I feel like, like an angel of heaven will come out and say, hey, come on in. The doctor will see you now. And the doctor has exactly what you need. Come on, we have Jesus, who is the great physician. And is looking for the sick, looking for people with problems. A lot of us have been thinking what's going to keep us out is exactly what God wants to use to put us in. You know what I found out is that God does the very best work, not through our strength, but through our weaknesses. When we're just willing to say, God, here I am. I don't feel like I've got much to offer, but God, I'm here. I'm available. God, I'm yours. You can do what you want to do. Jesus is the great physician. And when it came to this woman with this issue of blood, the Bible tells us, that she had suffered under the care of many doctors, and she spent all she had, but instead of getting better, she grew worse, and she had internal bleeding. She had an issue that was happening on the inside. You know, when nobody can see that you're bleeding when it's an internal issue, sometimes that can be the most difficult pain to deal with because it's a lonely feeling. It's a, I'm the only one with this kind of problem feeling. Nobody really sees what's going on deep down or what has you kind of tossing and turning at night or maybe that issue that you're embarrassed about and you don't want to tell your friends about and that you're struggling with and and they only see what you show them and maybe in this moment if you're honest with yourself you've gotten really good at covering your own condition. This woman's issue came with complexities. It wasn't just the physical issue But this problem produced a whole lot of other problems because during this time, according to Jewish custom, because of this particular issue, she would have been considered ceremonially unclean, which meant that she had to stay away from anybody and everybody. She couldn't have any human interaction. So it meant that not only did she have this problem inside her, but now she had all these other problems outside of her. She she probably lost her home and lost her family and lost people that she loved and cared about. She lived in isolation. So what I'm trying to say is that sometimes one issue produces another issue. Have you ever had that where it's like this problem seems to have little baby problems and then those problems have more problems and then eventually it's sort of hard to tell which issue is actually the original? Have you ever felt like your life's that kind of messed up? She's about to reach out and grab the, 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 the garment of the only one that could make her new but up to this point nobody knew how to fix her. 
She'd gone, the Bible says, to many doctors, and she'd suffered under the care of many doctors. So here's what God was speaking to me. She went to people and places that no doubt promised to make her well, probably false promises that they say, hey, we can make you well. But in the end, those people in those places only made her worse. We got to be careful that what we run to doesn't leave us worse off than what we are running from. Why had she spent all she had on all these doctors? Because they made promises. Hey, I can help you with that problem. See, I think sometimes for us, if you're a Christian in this place, and I think sometimes it's really easy for us to look at people that have gotten caught up in some sin or, or in, in, in a bit of a mess and to say, I can't believe they're doing that. I can't believe they're going there. I can't believe they talk like that. I can't believe they're smoking that. I can't believe, I can't believe they do what they do. But hey, look, so often... The only reason somebody has done what they've done or drank what they drank or said what they said is because they thought for a moment that it might help with their own hurt. You know what sin is? Sin is simply going to the wrong doctor. Okay, let me say it like this. Sin is what happens when you make the devil your doctor. She suffered, it says, at the hands of many doctors. Why? Because they made promises. Because she was desperate. She was saying anything that could help with this pain, maybe even for a moment, I'm willing to give it a try. And if you have found yourself caught up in a cycle of sin tonight, I bet you if you look back and if you think about it and consider it, you probably got into it simply because you thought it might help with your hurt if even for a moment. But here's the problem. When the enemy is making false promises, and here's to go back to the text, writing your prescription, those prescriptions always come with side effects. I'm thinking about those ads that we've all seen. I know nobody watches TV anymore. We all just stream everything. I kind of like, I'm I'm old school. I like TV with, I like, actually like ads. Is that weird? Come on, bring back the ads, somebody. I like ads. Somebody was like, no, get off, get off the platform, preacher. But I'm thinking of those ads, you know, like, like what, for some medications, like Advanatan or something like that. And there's people that are dancing in meadows, you know, whatever was their previous condition, it is gone. And no one has ever been happier in the history of humankind. And they're, they're celebrating and they're tossing their kid into the air and they're on a roller coaster. And then right at the end, there's like seven seconds where somebody has never talked so fast and then they list all the side effects. And then they talk about Advanifan may cause eye twitching, temporary deafness, confusion, fingernails falling off, unsightly rashes, and untimely death. And you're like, did, you, did they say untimely death? <laughs> side effects. Wait, wait, wait what did you say? The, the, the wages of sin of what is what? <laughs> Don't make any mistake. What the enemy offers will sometimes give you temporary relief from the symptoms. But it always comes with side effects. Isn't it crazy how some of the ways we try and feel better only make us feel so much worse and just make us feel bad? Have you ever tried to eat something because you thought it just makes you feel better and then you have a stomach ache because you ate a whole tray of Oreos? It's, it's why it's so easy. Here's how I want to minister to you. It's why it's so easy to get tripped up in sin. It can help with some symptoms, but it comes with an even worse side effect. So maybe it's like your life's a bit of a mess. And so the enemy wants to come along and the devil wants to be your doctor. And, and maybe your life's kind of messy and you got some stuff going on and you got some relationship issues and you got this, that, and the other. Your life's a bit of a mess. And so, so the enemy comes along and hands you a prescription. And says, hey, just take a little bit of this. It's called gossip. Oh, you take, take, take a little sip in the morning, you know, 15 milligrams of this. And, and, and here's what it's going to look like. Your life's messed up, but if you talk about her, hey, her life's even more messed up. It's going to make you feel better for a minute, but it's going to come with side effects. Now nobody's going to trust you. The devil's always trying to be your dog. Maybe... Maybe you're struggling with insecurity, which, by the way, let me have a dad moment in here because I'm old. 
If you're struggling with insecurity, 13, 15, 17, guess what? Every other single person in this room is too. It's called being a teenager. Don't worry, you'll get over it. When you're struggling with insecurity, the devil's going to come along. Hey, I'm going to be your doctor. I'm going to give you a prescription. Insecurity, oh, here's what you do. Here's all you got to do. Take a few of these. Just post whatever you need to post to get a few more likes. Just text whoever you think you need to text, whatever kind of picture you think they want to see, just to make sure that. But it comes with a side effect called shame. The devil's always trying to be your doctor. Maybe you got hurt. Hey, maybe you, maybe you got hurt in church. Maybe you got hurt by some people that you thought had your back. And so the enemy will come along, write you a prescription. Alex is playing the part of the devil, but you're, you're like Jesus to me. <laughs> the enemy will come along, write you a prescription, and, oh, you got hurt? Well, here's all you got to do. Just live in isolation. Never let anybody else again. Just, even better, just live online. You can create profiles. You can create a personality. And, and what I'm trying to say is that, is that the devil is always going to be quick to write you a prescription but that always comes with side effects. Now, I want to preach to you for just a minute about the lovely, one-of-a-kind, one and only, my grandma, Grandma Tilly, who is now in heaven with Jesus. I had, anybody love their grandma? Oh, I love my grandma Tilly. And if you care to know about it, she prayed me into my ministry. I think she, she prophesied over me until I had no choice but to preach. That's who she was. And she, she was... She was tall in the spirit, but she was tiny in the natural. You know what I'm saying? I think she was about 5'2". And she didn't have much at the end of her life. She'd really given it all away. She just had this little sort of just little home, just kind of a one-room home that she lived in. But she used that space to pray, and she prayed for me. And she, 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 I, bet you, I bet you in the spirit she prayed somehow over this. She was prophesying all the way back then. And, and I, I noticed that, you know, towards the end of her life, of course, um, she just kept living because she was that tough. You know what I'm saying? But towards the end of her life, she got so frail, and she had, she had all this medication that she would have to take. And have you ever seen those, like, pill organizers that are, like, every day of the week, and you have to keep everything organized? And she had all these pills, and one time I got to talking with her, I said, Grandma Tilly, how can you need this many pills? And she said, oh, well, the, the problem is I take that pill, and it makes me sleepy. That's the side effect. Hello. So now i got to take this other pill, and that wakes me up. This pill I take, I need that for my back. But when I take this pill, that raises my blood pressure. So now that's the side effect. So now i got to take this other pill, and that deals with that. What I'm trying to say is that when you, when you give in to the, the prescription that the devil would write trying to play your doctor, this side effect will have you taking another prescription and another prescription, and this problem leads to that problem, and I got to do this, and because I feel all this shame, now I got to just keep going, and now these people don't want to be around me, because I. and pretty soon, you are like Grandma Tilly with a box full of pills. I need all these pills just to survive, just to make it through this day, just to make it through another season, and it feels so messed up. Until you turn to Jesus, who is your great physician. And Jesus has your prescription. And it's one of power. And it's one of healing. And it's one of deliverance. And it's one full of life. And it's one that makes you new and sets you free. And makes you feel like dancing in the presence of God. We've got a great physician. We have to understand that what promised to work for this woman only made it worse. And, and by the way, what she wanted was right, but it was the way that she went about it that was all wrong. Sometimes you can have a desire that's going to lead you into your destiny, but you got to be careful. It's, it's not just what you want, but it's how you go about getting it. And then she decided, I'm done with all these doctors. And the Bible says she crawled through the dirt. And even though she was ceremonially unclean, at this point, she was like one of those people who show up coughing all over, sneezing with no mask at Target, and everybody's backing up. Come on, hashtag COVID jokes. You have to put them in. Don't you, preacher? You have to. But, but there's something I want you to see. She got so desperate 
that she finally said, there's nothing I won't do. I'm, I'm, I'm so desperate. There's, there's not, I, I want to I wanna prophesy over your life, student, and say if you're desperate, that is a sure indication that God is about to do it. There's something about she, where she said, there's nothing I won't do. I'll crawl through the dirt if I got to crawl through the dirt. I'll make a fool of myself if I got to make a fool of myself. I'll risk everything if I've got to risk everything. I'll lift my hands in worship if I need to lift my hands. I'll go back to God and I'll pray again. I'll keep showing up and serving even though I don't understand everything in this moment. I just come to a place where I'm desperate enough to say, God, there's nothing I won't do. Because here's sometimes when we miss out on the miracle because we want the miracle but we don't like God's method. It goes like this. We pray, God, I want you to heal my heart that's so hurt. And God says, all right, here's the prescription. It's called forgiveness. You need to forgive them. And you're like, God, I don't like that one. And then you go, back, God, I want you to heal my heart. We, we sometimes love what God does, but we're not sure if we love how God wants to do it. So don't miss your miracle because you get offended with God's method. God doesn't always work according to our preferences, but God always moves in power. So she said, there's nothing I won't do. And sometimes when God pulls you into a process that maybe you are, are is, is like uncomfortable or something new, I found out that sometimes what happens in the process is just as powerful, if not more, than receiving the answer to your actual prayer. Sometimes God's like, I, I love that you're praying for that, and I'm going to give you that, and I'm going to do that in your life, but I'm going to take you in a process that's even more powerful than what you're praying for. And you got to understand, and come on, uh, band, and help me out. You got to understand that it wasn't Jesus in this moment that touched her. She was the one that touched Jesus. And sometimes I found out that we can be waiting on God to touch us when actually God is waiting on us to touch him. And in a moment, I want to give us an opportunity to touch heaven together, to touch God together. To be a little bit like this woman who said, you know what, I'm desperate enough, God, I need you to do what only you can do in my life, so here I am. But I want to show you something before we get there. Watch this. When she reached out, touched Jesus, she was healed in her body of this internal bleeding, and that was what happened immediately. But I want to show you that there was another miracle that unfolded more eventually. Ah, see, watch this. It's not just the enemy's prescriptions that come with side effects. God's do too. Touching Jesus didn't just stop the bleeding and make her well. There were, there were side effects. Jesus took the time to stop and turned around. And remember where she had been called the woman with the issue of blood? Jesus turned around and called her by a different name, a new name, and looked her in the eyes and said, Daughter, your faith has made you well. See, now the side effects are kicking in. She wasn't just healed by Jesus, but she was receiving a new identity from Jesus. These are the side effects. Not only was she healed in her body, but she was given a brand new identity. See, there's going to be some side effects. There's some side effects that are going to, they're going to kick in. We worship God because God is worthy. But can I tell you that there's always a side effect that happens in worship. All of a sudden, we're no longer worried what we were worried about. We're no longer frantic. We're no longer freaking out because the side effect is that when we worship, we find ourselves in God's presence where we get a brand new perspective. There's always a side effect when we take God's prescription. And the Bible says to, to, to whatever we got to come and bring an offering, to give. And maybe during this time in your life, that means, hey, I ain't got a penny to my name, but I can show up and stack seats. I'm ready, pastor, where you want me. But the Bible says, hey, there's a side effect. When you take this prescription of giving, here's the side effect. Now you're going to receive. Something, something awesome happens when you no longer live like this and you live like this. Your hand's open to receive whatever God has to give. There's always a side effect. We follow Jesus. That's the prescription, the great prescription that heaven would write for all of our lives. We follow Jesus because Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. But you know, there's a side effect. When we follow Jesus, you know what the psalmist said, the Bible says? God, when I follow you, 
Here's the side effect. Goodness and mercy follow me. Wherever you might be tonight, maybe you've been serving God all your life. Maybe you're, you got a drug problem as in your friend drug you to this conference tonight. You've never been in church in your life. Wherever you are, I want to ask you, I want to charge you, I want to, I want to challenge you to make a move. This, this woman, I don't know, the Bible doesn't indicate that she would have got the touch she got that day unless she simply decided in her heart, there's nothing I won't do. Can I tell you, just as somebody, I guess, a bit older, been around for a while, a little bit older, just a little older, there have been moments in my life where I can look back and it was sometimes something just like this, where I just made a decision, God, I want to touch you and I want you to touch me. And I've encountered the presence of God, the glory of God, the power of God in ways that will just, just wreck your whole life in the best kind of meaning. And I believe that's not just what I want for you. I believe that's what God wants for you in this moment. So I'm going to ask that you would stand to your feet. And... Now that you did that, I'm going to ask, there's sometimes just something about taking a step. I'm going to ask that if you're hungry for God, if you want a fresh touch of God in your life, or if maybe in another way you're kind of like this woman where you got some stuff deep down on the inside, maybe some secret stuff, maybe some stuff you haven't told anybody about, and you need to be set free, wherever you are, if you want to touch God, I wonder if you come and, and just feel, we're going to call this an altar, and if you would feel this altar tonight. Come on, come on down. Come on down. We're going we're gonna to worship in just a moment. I, don't, I, I hope it's everybody in the room. That's fine. We can smash in. That's fine. But there's sometimes just something about taking a step. This woman didn't sit around in her house saying, I, I, hope, I hope God can touch me. That day she said, I'm going to touch God. I'm going to do whatever it takes. And this, people are still coming. I'm going to pray right now. We're going to get ready and we'll worship in a moment. Would you lift up your heart before the Lord? We're not playing church. This is not religion. The presence of the living God is in this place. You can meet with God right here, right now. You don't have to wait for anything in a way that will change the entire course of all the rest of your life. And Jesus, I pray. Come on, would you lift up your hands all over the room? Jesus, I pray right now. Holy Spirit, you would blow like a mighty rushing wind in this place. God, here we are, your children, your people, and we're crying out for you. God, would you touch your people again? Holy Spirit, would you fall in this place? And I pray for the one that's desperate. I pray for the one that's hurting. I pray for the one that's broken. Spirit of God, fall fresh on their life. Do what only you can do. Move with mighty power in this moment. Wonderful Jesus. How we love you. How we love you. Come on team, can we sing something? We're going to worship together. How we love you. Come on, it's good for your heart to be hungry. Jesus, I want to touch you with my worship. Jesus, I'm going to touch you with my desperation. Jesus, I'm going to touch you with the cry of my heart. Come on, all over the room. Let worship arise. I've carried a burden to love on my own. I wasn't created there. Let's lift this up before Jesus. 
Come on, the power of God. Like a mighty rushing My wind. Heart needs a surgeon. Spirit of God. My soul needs a friend. So I run to the Father. out for you Jesus and we thank you that the kingdom of God has come near that Jesus you come near where we can reach out lay hold of you thanks Lord I pray right now that healing will break out all over the room healing in spirit healing in soul healing in body right now in the name of Jesus I bind every suicidal thought, every thought of self-harm. Be set free. Be reminded. Jesus calls you daughter. Jesus calls you son. In the name of Jesus, I release fresh identity that flows from the heart of God to every person in this room. I thank you for it, Lord. I thank you for it, Lord. Thank you for it, Lord. Lord, I thank you for my man. What an awesome call of God you have on your life. I see you like a well that runs deep. 
you got a you've got a deep love for God and you've got a deep relationship with Jesus and sometimes the overflow of that is that you've got insight that other people don't seem to have you actually you've got wisdom that goes well beyond your years and your age that sometimes is misunderstood sometimes you feel a little bit like you're on the outside looking in God would say to you in this hour, you're exactly where I want you to be. I've positioned you and I've called you unto myself. I'm a jealous God over you. I've called you and I've chosen you. There will be great and mighty things that you do in God and for God that will all be to come. The word of the Lord would be to you to keep it very simple in this season. Keep your Bible open. Keep your heart open. Keep your mouth open with praise and prayer. Keep it very simple. God says, all those complexities, everything that you worry about, and what should I do next? God says, I'll guide you with my hand. I'm going to take care of you. You're in the hand of God. God, I pray right now, fill them fresh with your Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I'm right here. I want to pray for you. There's been a lot of times where you could have went the other way, but you, you chose to go, to go God's way. And God would come to you in this hour. The Lord would come to you in this hour to honor your faith and your decision and your heart that has said yes to the Lord. And because of that, God's got, you've got a gift of influence. People like to be around you. You're charismatic and you're funny. And people just, I just, I like, I want to be around. And God says, I'm going to use that for my glory and it's going to be as well for your good. And there's been a few, there's been some stuff that's happened in your family. And there's been some stuff that has had your concern and had your prayer and you've been worried about and maybe I could have done that. God's going to iron it all out. God's going to fix something that has been sort of, sort of messed up in your family. God's going to fix it. Jesus, I believe you for it. I thank you. I thank you, Jesus. I wonder if we're going to get ready here, but I want to do this. I know it's night one, and, you know, you're kind of supposed to, like, maybe save some of this for the end, but let's just do it now. How about that? Here's what happened to me. I was a little bit older than you. I was 21. And I got hungry for God, and I was like, I was like that one reaching out. I wanted to touch Jesus. What I, what I found is as I emptied myself out and I said, Jesus, I surrender all to you, that Jesus came and filled me with the Spirit of God. You want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You want to be filled with the Spirit of God. Or if you want a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit, I've got faith to pray for you right now. If that's you, lift up your hands all over the room. Jesus, I thank you for... The Spirit of God in this place for every hungry hand lifted into the air. Jesus, these are your people and this is your generation. Right now, in the name of Jesus, be filled with the Spirit of God. Be filled afresh with the Holy Spirit. Come on, we receive it by faith. We're filled with the Holy Spirit. You might want to open up your mouth in praise. You might open up your mouth and you might even speak in a language you don't understand. The Bible calls it a heavenly language all over the room. Holy Spirit, hear our empty vessels. Fill your church again. Fill your people again. Every hungry heart right now, in the name of Jesus, be filled with the mighty, awesome, wonderful Holy Spirit of God. And I declare over every life here, Jesus, they belong to you. They will serve you all the days of their life. Every gift is yours. Every talent is yours. Every tomorrow is yours. God, we call forth preachers. We call forth worship leaders. We call forth teachers and business leaders. God, we call forth moms and dads. God, we call forth gifts that would be for your glory. God, we thank you for revival. We thank you for awakening. We thank you for influence. We thank you for the harvest. Come on, and if God has filled you fresh tonight, why don't you give Jesus a hand clap of praise? We thank you, Lord. Come on, let's do better than that. Jesus, we love you. We thank you. We thank you. We worship you. We exalt you in this place. We exalt you in this place. And let me say this. Hey, because... Because I, I bet you, I bet you some of you in this room right now are downright freaked out because you, you feel the presence of God. Here's all you got to do. Keep showing up at your youth ministry. Keep reading your Bible. And you know how to increase in something? You're like, I love this. I love, I love this moment. I want more of this. Just be grateful. Just turn your heart to God in thanks and in worship. Just keep showing up, Jesus. I'm so thankful. So one more time we pray. Now I'm going to hand it over to Jesus. We're so thankful for you. 
we love what you do and what only you can do. Real quickly now, just 30 seconds, bow your head, close your eyes all over the room. Everybody in the room, and I'm going to turn it over. With our heads bowed, our eyes closed, if you're here tonight and you want to give your heart to Jesus, you want to say yes to Jesus, or you know that this is your moment, I want to come back to Jesus. Your awesome God, Jesus is waiting with arms wide open, ready to throw a party. If that's you with your head all over the room with heads down, eyes closed. If that's you, I'm just going to ask on the count of three, if you want to give your life to Jesus, you want to be made new from the inside out. The power of God is here to save. If that's you, just on the count of three, just raise your hand high into the air, and I'm going to have you put it back down, and then we're all going to pray together. If that's you, you want to be saved. You want to come back to Jesus tonight on the count of three. One, two, three. Raise that hand into the air. There's hands all over the room. There's too many to count. Thanks for it, Lord. Thanks for it, Lord. There's hands all over the room. Okay, here's, here's what we're going to do. You put your hands down. Just pray with me in your heart. I'm just going to help give you some language for the prayer that you're already praying. Jesus, I come to you right now by faith, and I pray that you would save me. I want to make you my Savior and my Lord and my God and my everything. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Wash me in the cleansing power of the blood that you shed on the cross of Calvary. As I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth, you're the way and the truth and the life. Jesus, because you've called me by my name, now I call on your name, the name of Jesus, that I might be saved. Thank you for making me yours and making me a Christian. Jesus, I belong to you. I pray amen. And come on, everybody in the room, we said amen together. And now we celebrate. Come on, the Bible says that the angels threw a party. We might as well throw a party down here too. Hey! Hallelujah. Pastor Shalom. Woo! Come on. Man, such a good word. You know, I think before we end the night, we got to praise God one more time, as I say. Come on. Let's go ahead. The worship team has a song for us, so let's go ahead. Let's give God all the praise, all the glory for everything he did.
your song Cause you've got a lion inside of those arms Get up and praise the Lord Come on my soul Oh don't you get shy on me Lift up your soul Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs Get up and praise the Lord Come on my soul Oh don't you get shy on me Lift up your song Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs Get up and praise the Lord your song, cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs, get up and praise the our hearts cry God the one thing that we can give you is worship and God it's not a song that we sing with our words but God it's a cry of our heart this is God at the end of the day all I want is you to be praised at the end of the day all I want is that God my life is a sacrifice is an offering to you and so God that is our prayer God that is our cry that God tonight would all of heaven be glorified because God we worship you and not out of a place of hype and not out of a place of conference but out of a place of God I'm desperate for you God just like that woman who reaches out and says God I don't want your my way but I want your way God that's our heart God that's our cry God we come and we say God Here's what we have, is a praise, is a hallelujah, that God, you would be magnified in this place, in Jesus' name. Come on, can we just give God a shout in this place? Woo! Come on. You know, It's getting loud again. Um, no, man, come on. That is night one of conference. And something that I loved was I've been, like, we've been praying as youth pastors, you know, for months and months about this conference. And the one thing that's just been in our heart is this, and you've heard it said a couple times, is this whole idea of revival. 
And what I tell my students at Sun City is revival will not happen outside of you till it happens inside of you. Because if you look at the Bible, even the story of the woman, she had an encounter that was undeniable. And our heart and our pray, prayer for you is that as youth pastors, that as young people, you would have an undeniable encounter with God, but it wouldn't just stop there, but it would cause you to do this 180 change and your life would begin to be different. And I want to encourage you tonight, if God did something in your life, or if you have questions, text your small group leader. Hey, I got questions. Hey, here's what God did. Let this not just be a moment here tonight, but let God radically change you from the inside out. Because if he does it, that's when your school is going to change. That's when Spokane, that's when Coeur d'Alene, that's when Washington and Idaho is going to change. Why? Because revival is happening inside of you. And it's not hype. It's not something that that's only happens with a big band. It's what happens when you meet a God that is real. And that is our prayer. Come on, I'm so excited. Tomorrow night, we're going to be at Victory Faith. Come on, with Pastor Trevor. It's going to be awesome.